Hey, good evening, Pahrump. I'm Dr. Michael Ryan, your host of the Independent Doctors of Pahrump. And tonight I have a very nice guest. This is Melanie Lentz. And Melanie is our newest nurse practitioner at the Independent uh, Medical uh, Group. And um, I wanted to uh, get her on the show to introduce her to you, uh, to let you know that we are growing. We're increasing um, our practitioners. Melanie was at the Mountain Valley Physicians Group. And when the hospital sold, um, the uh, Mountain Valley Physicians Group, which was owned by Desert View, uh, to help build the census at the hospital and, and keep it going. They've always wanted to have their own practitioner group. But the uh, UHS who bought them out, which is the Valley Group, decided that they didn't need practitioners anymore, correct? So yes. you were kind of given 30 days uh, notice at, the, at November and um, you had trained with us with uh, Renee Goodhart and you did your clinical trainings before you got your APRN, right? Yes. So, um, and we got exposed to you and you got exposed to us, but uh, you know, the hospital is a little bit more glamorous than uh, we were at the time. So, uh, but we're really excited you're here um, and ought to give you the opportunity to, to come over and, and be with us and, and uh, help serve the community of Prump. And I'm grateful that you did, just didn't run and, and uh, run to Vegas, right? Because that's, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to run to Vegas, but at least you're here. So um, how are you liking it so far? Um, I like it a lot. I'm excited to uh, be with you guys and um, serve the community here. Yeah. Well, it's a challenging community. Right. It is. Yeah. It I mean, is. Yeah, but it's good. You know, there's no shortage of sick people in this town, um, and they all are. Well, Prompt's a retirement community, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people move here uh, to retire, and I think they get deluded because they don't believe or they don't understand the difficulties of a small town and the lack of services that are available. I mean, it's cheap to live, it, it, it becomes easy to live here. Uh, it's kind of beautiful with Mount Charleston and the air is clean and easy to get around, but then you start to negotiate the medical side of it and it becomes a nightmare, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. it really does. And uh, so, um, but have you found anything that you really like taking care of? I mean, have you kind of, I mean, you're kind of like four months into this deal, right? Right? Four um, or five? A couple months, actually. Couple months, couple yeah. months. Yeah. Okay, so, I'll give you credit for it. All credit. right. Yeah, you did, you did a couple months of clinical, so you got yes. to give you credit right. for that. Well, with the clinicals, yeah, a few yeah. months. Yeah. And uh, have you done any, uh, is there any area you really like or that you enjoy more than than other women's health or? Um, uh, no, there's not one particular area. I enjoy taking care of everyone. Um, I did specialize in family practice. So Good. kids all the way up to geriatric. Yeah, from the cradle to the yep. cradle to the grave sign of, sign of thing. So, and uh, so how many would, uh, tell me a little bit of difference that you see before Mountain Valley and, and our group. Tell me what you find. Uh, I know we're a little less structured right? Um, my time with Mountain Valley was pretty short. I was only there about a month before they closed. So um, it's really hard to compare. Okay. okay. Uh, but you're trying to get out there. And, and so I, I think the big thing, you know, Pahrump is that, you know, she is available. I mean, I, I you know, as you might have to call me and wait um, uh, a month to get in to see me, you can call in and get in to see you right away. And, yeah. you, and I work with Melanie in the, in the office. So if there's an issue or there's something that, you know, even if you can't get in to see me, you can always say, well, I'd like to see Melanie. And then you can get in to see her. And then if there's an issue, you're, I'm right there to, to help you take care of it. Um, and I, I think you were an RN, right? For yes. Long before this, and you worked over at the hospital, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And what did you, what little care did you do at the hospital? Um, well, I've been a nurse for 14 years, wow. and um, I started out in Michigan, and I moved out here and continued on with that. But I've been over here at the hospital for, um, since 2010, and I started out as just the uh, floor nurse, and then I graduated to management, so. Okay. So you were an RN for actually in the field, and what kind of management did you do for for them? So um, I was the uh, med surge med tele manager there. Okay. Yeah. So as a manager, you were um, overseeing all the other nurses. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So checking their work and making sure they're a dot yeah. in their eyes and crossing <laughs> their T's. 
And then, so it seems to me you obviously have a certain skill set that you're advancing. When did you decide to go into become an APRN, Advanced Practice Registered Nurse? Um, I've wanted to do that for a long time, and after I moved out here, I started to go back to school to get that done. And how long did it so, take you to do that? Um, when I first started out, it was part-time, uh, and then the last year and a half, I went full-time to complete it. Okay. So it took about three years. Three years? Yeah. Did you find your 14 years of nursing experience helped you get through? It did. Okay. It did. Um, there is a definite difference between being a nurse and being a nurse practitioner, however. And maybe you can explain that. What, what's that? Um, well, being a nurse, you obviously the doctor tells you you're going to give this medication, this medication, and this medication. And now as a nurse practitioner, you're the one that's saying you're going to take this medication and this medication and this medication. Totally different. So it is. It's totally different. It yeah. really is. Yeah. I mean, I know. I, I remember a story when I was working in an urgent care um, in Colorado. I had a um, MA who would watch me sew things up and would do that. And he was always second guessing <laughs> the doctors, right? And uh, so he had gone to PA school. And I had gone away to do something else, came back, and he was a PA. And so there was a, there was a laceration that came in, and he was always critical of people sewing. So I put in a stitch, and I said, okay, here's your turn. <laughs> and it totally changed his perspective on everything. Right. I mean, as a nurse, you question, well, why do they do that? Why do they mm -hmm. do that? And now you're having it's a it's it's an eye opener, isn't it? It is. It really is. Um, you know, being a nurse, I you know, the doctor would say, well, you need to give this medication. I would think I don't think I would give that medication. I think I would give him something else. But now being a nurse practitioner and looking at the whole picture, it's a it's a totally different perspective. Yeah, it is. I mean, and, and I think the the thing that I the thing that um, comes with that is experience and peeling away the layers and mm -hmm. understanding why you do certain things in certain situations. I yeah. mean, I, I know a lot of, I see this all the time. It's just like, well, uh, I have edema in my legs. Okay, so I just want to give a diuretic. Well, that's not always the case because the edema is maybe due to something other than fluid retention, right? It might mm -hmm. be due to um, a lymphedema. It might be due to something. So if you give someone a diuretic and you dry them out unnecessarily, you cause them more harm. So it's understanding not only taking the, okay, I'm going to give the Lasix, but why am I giving the mm -hmm. Lasix, okay? And what are the complications that I need to look for in giving that Lasix so that I know that the treatment is, because now the buck is in your hand, right? Right. How do you like right. that? Um, it's a little nerve wracking, yeah. um, but uh, I have you there. Yeah. So um, it's it's going well. I really do like it. Yeah. I yeah. enjoy you're, it a lot. You're not too far from, you know, and you keep your decisions simple. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things I like about nurses in, in the sense in the nursing school and the nurses, and I and I enjoy, I would much rather have a, a APRN in my practice than a uh, PA. Okay, and the reason why is because um, I think as a nurse you have a different level of empathy for patients. Okay, um, you can be a uh, construction guy and go and go to PA school and become a PA. Okay, and I think having those years of experience in, in being a nurse helps you a lot. Um, on the other hand, it can be that uh, it can be your greatest strength can be also your greatest weakness, right? Um, because you, you can be so critical of something that sometimes you think, well, I can do that better, I can do that better, and then you'll get in there and you realize, well, that's a totally different different thing. And then mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about calling a doctor and him yelling at you, right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing worse than getting on the phone at midnight and calling, hey, Dr. Smith, your patient's doing what? And I hang up on you, right? And now what do you got to do, right? Mm -hmm. so, so do you have a lot of that? Um, through my nursing career, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> gives doctors a bad name, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no. It just gives me bigger shoulders. That's yeah. All. Yeah. No, I mean, and it teaches you how to deal with adversity. It does. Right? It, it does. does. I mean, so having to deal in difficult situations, with different, dealing with difficult doctors is just like dealing with difficult patients. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be kind of an uh, ambassador of goodwill. You have to understand that, you know, you, the, the object is to get the patient treated. And so if the doctor is not being cooperative, then... You know, you hate calling them. I know some people. Well, it's true. I mean, I, I, I know nurses, you know, within the hospice organization. I'm busy seeing patients, and they're calling me for stuff, and I have to stop what I'm doing and thinking about this when I was busy thinking about somebody mm -hmm. else. 
and it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot. It's a lot of pressure um, on, on that. But I think you know you will learn over time. You know, it's it's just experience, and I'll tell you that from right from the get go. It's just time under the curve. You just have to see it a lot in order to be able to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And um, they're just things that happen in daily and in, in, in medicine that are just as long as you don't, you know. Um, I guess I would say as long as you don't take it too far to the limit, you're in you're pretty good shape, right? Mm -hmm. So now you could prescribe just about anything, right? <clears throat> yes. But as a, in order, as an, uh, the first thing you have to do is have what we call, I think APRNs require you to have 2,000 hours before you can kind of be on your own yes. prescribing just controlled medications, right? Mm -hmm. Not dangerous drugs. Right. Right. So. Narcotics, that's why you work underneath me so that you can give those out. But uh, uh, opioids and pain medications, but anything else you can prescribe whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you want to. So I, I think it's good from a community standpoint, the shortage of practitioners, you know, that nurses do become, you know, um, practitioners. I, I think that um, I, I think it services people because at the end of the day, not everybody may like me, right? but they may like you. And so you're sweet, you're pretty, so they should enjoy you. Why, why wouldn't they, right? So, um, well, anyway, um, you know, I, we're going to be going to break here pretty soon. And I wanted to, to say that, uh, you know, this is a, this is a tape segment. And uh, so um, that's why there's no call-ins. And we're going to come back shortly. And we're going to talk a little bit about more about the practice in the office and get a little to know Melanie a little bit more. And thank you for tuning in, Pram. Thank you. I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of The Independent Doctors of Pahrump, a TV show that airs Monday night on Channel 46. I want to remind you that I am a practicing physician in Pahrump, and I'm an independent practitioner, which means I am not bought by any insurance company or corporate medicine. We provide the highest level of care. We have nurse practitioners. We have other physicians, specialists who come to our office. Please come visit me. I'm at 1316 East Calvada here in the heart of Pahrump. Thank you.